good evening all of you uh i hope i am properly visible and audible to all of you so uh, we are going to start today with part 2 of uh, obs revision which i started the other day if you can uh, listen to me properly if i'm audible properly please show me a thumbs up in the comment section am i properly audible if yes please show me a thumbs up okay thank you abhinandan kartikeyan for confirming that i am audible and i am visible uh, okay so roshni hi okay, now we are going to start with ops part 2 in ops part 2 the first and the most important question which is here now for you is identify the early sign of pregnancy being shown in the image so tell me what sign of pregnancy can you see in the image goodell sign jackmeyer sign oc ander sign or hegar sign now over here what you are seeing in this question you are seeing that uh, in this image you are seeing uh, the cervix you are seeing the vagina and you are seeing that there is a purplish and a bluish hue which is present in vagina right vagina is bluish in color cervix is bluish in color so and when you get a bluish cervix a blue colored vagina this is because of increased vascularity and what is that sign called as that is called as chadwick sign or that is called as jackmeyer sign so the correct answer is option b jackmeyer sign or chadwick sign you are not going to say goodell sign goodell sign means softening of the cervix softening of the cervix is not anything which is visible right if you see the cervix being touched then that is goodell sign over here they are showing you a bluish colored cervix and that is jackmeyer sign same question can be asked in another format where they can give you ki do uh, tables mein de diya they have given you signs on one side and explanation on the other side and they can ask you to match which sign corresponds to what explanation so remember this is very important the signs in early pregnancy so number one sign in early pregnancy is goodell sign which is softening of the cervix so that's softening of the cervix this is the earliest sign to become positive in pregnancy and this is seen at 6 weeks of pregnancy then you have the jackmeyer sign or the chadwick sign jackmeyer sign or chadwick sign means bluish discoloration of vagina and cervix then you have the piscasic sign which is asymmetrical enlargement of the uterus this asymmetrical enlargement kyu hoti hai this happens because of implantation happening on one side of the uterus then you have the osiander sign in osiander sign you feel pulsations in the lateral fornix of the vagina then you have hegar sign this is another sign just by image based question aa sakta hai they can show you an image like this in this image you are seeing that one hand is behind the uterus per abdominally and other hand is inside the vagina and you can see because upper part of the uterus is where the product of conception is lower part of the uterus is empty and lower part of the uterus is soft because lower part of the uterus is empty because lower part of the uterus is soft that is why fingers of both the hands they approximate each other so over here that's what i have written that fingers of both the hands approximate each other and this is what is your hegar sign where you can get an image based question palmer sign is regular rhythmic contractions in the uterus which are felt in first trimester so all these signs are very very important the first sign to become positive is goodell sign iske alawa hegar sign becomes positive between 6 to 10 weeks of pregnancy and iske alawa aur jitne bhi signs hai whether it is jackmeyer sign whether piscasic whether osiander and whether palmer all of them they become positive by 8 weeks of pregnancy another theoretical question which they are very fond of asking you is about the size of the uterus at 6 weeks the size of the uterus is x hen size at 8 weeks it's a cricket ball size at 12 weeks it is a fetal head size where is the uterus felt 
when is the uterus felt at the level of pubic symphysis it is felt at the level of pubic symphysis at 12 weeks it is at the level of umbilicus at 22 weeks it is at the upper border of the umbilicus at 24 weeks it is at the level of ziphy sternum at 36 weeks jab height of the uterus is going to correspond to ziphy sternum at that time a pregnant female will have a lot of breathlessness because the height of the uterus is completely ziffy sternum. Tak hua hai. Right? Now, what will happen after 36 weeks? The head of the fetus is going to enter into the pelvis. Now, because head of the fetus goes down into the pelvis, so height of the uterus decreases and mother is relieved from this respiratory discomfort. This is what is called as lightening or welcome sign. So, all the signs we were getting in the first trimester. Mein mil rahe the. Right? Whereas lightening or welcome sign in which trimester mein milta hai? that is seen in third trimester. Clear to all of you? Okay. Then uh, some important points related to ultrasound in pregnancy which you should be knowing. Now, jitne bhi events ya jitne bhi structures hume ultrasound mein TVS pe dikhte hain just time pe. Usme you have to add one week to get the time at which they can be seen on TAS, right? So the first structure jo ki hume ultrasound pe dikhta hai, that is gestational sac. Gestational sac is seen by four weeks, three days uh, or it can be seen up till five weeks. And ye four weeks, three days ya five weeks hum kaha se calculate karte hai? From last menstrual period se. Yolk sac dikta hai by 5 weeks. Fetal pole is seen by 5 to 5 and a half weeks. And cardiac activity is seen by 5 and a half to 6 weeks. Clear to all of you? Now, the other very important point which I want to tell you is how can you estimate gestational age? See, gestational age ko aap clinically bhi estimate kar sakte ho. Clinically aap kaise kar sakte ho gestational age ko estimate? Clinically, you gestational age ko estimate kar sakte ho by following Negley's rule. All of you know, how do you calculate EDD? EDD calculate karne ka tarika hota hai. First day of last menstrual period mein, you have to add 9 months and 7 days. You have to add 9 months and 7 days to get EDD by using Negley's formula. So, this Negley's formula ko aap gestational age ko calculate karne ke liye bhi use kar sakte ho. But, if question says that patient has conceived while she was on oral combined pills, number one, or if your question says that her periods were irregular, patient ke periods were irregular before she conceived, or if your question says that the patient was breastfeeding when she conceived. Or your question says, number four, that patient doesn't remember her LMP. Patient doesn't remember her LMP. In all these cases, if they ask you what is the best method to estimate gestational age, you will not say Negley's formula. You are going to say, we will do ultrasound to estimate gestational age. Now, jab bhi aap ultrasound karte ho gestational age ko estimate karne ke liye, the earlier you do the ultrasound, the more accurate it gives you the gestational age. So, jitna early hum karenge, utna early we are going to get the gestational age, uh, we are the more accurate will be the gestational age. First trimester me, you use crown rump length. Crown rump length, hum kehte hai, ki you use in first trimester, it is the best parameter to know the gestational age and overall also it is the best parameter because the earlier you do the ultrasound, the more accurately it is going to give you the gestational age. The se in second trimester, the most accurate is biparietal diameter. BPD stands for biparietal diameter. And in third trimester, it is femur length. Agar second trimester mein BPD options mein nahi hoga, then you are going to mark your answer as head circumference. 
clear to all of you now please remember this was a previous year neat question and that is why i am stressing on it again if your question says that a patient has conceived while she was on ocps or while she was breastfeeding or if she if her cycles were irregular and they ask you what is the best method to calculate gestational age you are not going to say negley's formula you are going to say ultrasound and on ultrasound you are going to check her crown rump length ab crown rump length jab tak ka nahi dikhti hai right us time tak first trimester mein is there any parameter which you can use to measure gestational age yes then you can use mean sac diameter ye mean sac diameter kya hota hai gestational sac is a sac iske teen diameters ko hum lenge and unka mean nikal lenge that is mean sac diameters right so none of you are going to say ki first trimester mein best parameter is mean sac diameter no mean sac diameter hum tabhi use karte hain when crown rump length cannot be measured right it is too early to measure crown rump length right another very important question which they ask you is that suppose there is a female who has previous history of ectopic pregnancy and wo aapke paas on the day of missed period i that means 4 weeks after her lmp i now she wants she is very anxious ki kahi uske ectopic pregnancy to nahi hai what is the best method to rule out ectopic pregnancy now just now we are seeing that the first structure which is visible on ultrasound is gestational sac and gestational sac dikhta hai by 4 weeks 3 days in other words 4 and a half weeks pe and pe question mein hame diya hai ki patient hamare paas on the day of missed period i hai now how am i going to relieve her tension how am i going to tell her ki uh, whether she has ectopic pregnancy or not please do not say we are going to do a upt upt to positive hoga hi hoga but upt positive aayega usse we will not be able to know ki ectopic pregnancy hai ya intrauterine pregnancy hai your answer in that case will be beta hcg measurement to agar koi patient 4 and 1/2 week se pehle aati hai and hame dekhna hai ki ectopic pregnancy hai ki nahi hai what is the next step these days fmg exams neat exams are very very fond of asking you next step your next step is going to be beta hcg measurement is that clear uh, all of you yes okay then question kunai this is a very very important sign which you get on ultrasound there are three signs which i'll show you just now on ultrasound all three are very important the following sign on ultrasound indicates double blep sign right option a implantation of blastocyst in endometrium option b gestational sac surrounded by decidua capsularis and decidua pisalis option c gestational sac surrounded by decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis option d yolk sac and amniotic sac right now these are the three very important signs which you get on ultrasound in case of pregnancy first sign to become positive is intra decidual sign intra decidual sign milta hai intra decidual sign ka matlab kya hai intra decidual sign ka matlab hai ki a g sac is seen inside the endometrium pregnant endometrium is called as decidua so that is what is intra decidual sign so you can see a gestational sac inside the decidua right that is intra decidual sign after this you get another sign which is called as double decidual sac sign ye jo double decidual sac sign hota hai isme you see a black colored area a black space which is surrounded by two rings and ye jo rings hoti hain usme inner ring is decidua capsularis outer ring is decidua parietalis so decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis give rise to double decidual sac sign and phir hame milta hai double bleb sign double bleb sign ka matlab hai two bubbles are seen inside the uterus and ye jo do bubbles mil rahe hain inside the gestational sac this over here is a gestational sac so over here just let me show you this over here is a gestational sac is gestational sac may you are seeing 
one bubble over here which is marked by a thin arrow and another bubble over here which is marked by a thick arrow right and these two bubbles correspond to yolk sac and amniotic sac so jab bhi double bleb sign milta hai it corresponds to yolk sac and amniotic sac double decidual sac sign corresponds to decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis clear to all of you yes stop asking me for pdf i told you i am technically handicapped mujhe pdf banana nahi aata hai so i would want all of you to please take screenshots right so over here the following sign on ultrasound indicates double bleb sign the answer is option d yolk sac and amniotic sac right then when do you do ultrasound during pregnancy and jab aap ultrasounds ye uh, these are the ultrasounds which are done during pregnancy and they have special names so number 1 is a dating scan or a viability scan that is the first ultrasound which is done in pregnancy around 6 to 8 weeks then you have a nuchal translucency scan which is done between 11 weeks to 13 weeks plus 6 days then an anomaly scan Anomaly scan का दूसरा नाम target scan भी होता है इसको booking scan भी कहते हैं It is also called as TIFA or it is a level टू scan, right? And this is done between 18 to 20 weeks. Now जितनी भी pregnant females हैं you have to do this scan in all pregnant females. During pregnancy, if a female can afford only one ultrasound. then in that case it has to be an anomaly scan which is done between 18 to 20 weeks and then comes a growth scan which is done between 30 to 32 weeks har pregnant female ko hum fetal echo karane ko nahi kehte hain fetal echo tabhi karana chahiye if it is needed for example in case of pre gestational diabetes a fetal excuse me a fetal echo is recommended and the time to get a fetal echo done is 22 to 24 weeks now if they ask you what is the best time to do ultrasound for estimation of gestational age so for estimation of gestational age best time to do ultrasound is first trimester for placental localization best time is third trimester jab hum ultrasound karte hain twins mein they ask you that for curiosity for knowing curiosity When do you do ultrasound? You do ultrasound between 10 to 13 weeks. For twin to twin transfusion syndrome, twin to twin transfusion syndrome can earliest be detected on ultrasound in first trimester and best time to do ultrasound for detecting twin to twin transfusion syndrome is second trimester. Rashu Paul this class is for FMG students foreign medical graduate students lekin this is very important for nursing students as well so if you are a nursing student and watching it keep on noting these important points and then you can go and revise it from the nursing next live app next question what is normal in pregnancy now this is again a very very important topic for fmgs uh, maternal adaptation in pregnancy maternal adaptation oh sorry what has happened okay maternal adaptation in pregnancy is a very important topic for all the exam going fmg exam of uh, students so sabse pehle aata hai cardiac uh changes which happen during pregnancy and they have asked you what is normal in pregnancy option a fixed split s2 option b s4 option 3 option c s3 and option d pericardial knock so what is normal in pregnancy quickly tell me rizwana has given the answer as c vipul c all of you are saying yes s3 is normal and that's absolutely right cardiac changes in pregnancy is very very important for all of you please remember pulse rate increases in pregnancy 
blood pressure decreases in pregnancy decrease is seen both in systolic and diastolic bp because peripheral vascular resistance decreases in pregnancy why peripheral vascular resistance decreases in pregnancy this is because जो मेन हार्मोन होता है प्रेगनेंसी में वो प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन होता है एंड प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन का स्मूथ मसल रिलैक्सिंग इफेक्ट होता है दैट इज व्हाई पेरिफरल वैस्कुलर रेजिस्टेंस डिक्रीजेस इन प्रेगनेंसी अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज जीवीपी जेवीपी रिमेन्स नॉर्मल ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट हार्ट साउंड एस इज लाउड प्लस इट्स स्प्लिटिंग इज प्रोमनेंट इन प्रेगनेंसी एस इज नॉर्मल इन प्रेगनेंसी एस इज अ इजिली हर्ड ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी मर्मर्स में इजेक्शन सिस्टोलिक मर्मर Less than grade थ्री by सिक्स is normal in pregnancy. Continuous murmur is normal in pregnancy, but अगर diastolic murmur मिल रही है that indicates heart disease. Heart rotates upwards and outwards during pregnancy. That is why ECG में we get left axis deviation. Apex beat की position change हो जाती है during pregnancy and X-ray में mild cardiomegaly मिलती है Cardiac output very very important you have to know it. Cardiac output increases during pregnancy. Cardiac output का formula होता है stroke volume into heart rate. Stroke volume भी increase करता है during pregnancy and heart rate भी increase करता है during pregnancy. A very important question is कि cardiac output में increase is when does it begin it begins by 5 weeks maximum cardiac output during pregnancy is between 28 to 32 weeks now be very careful if they ask you maximum cardiac output during pregnancy it is 28 to 32 weeks but overall if they ask you when do you get maximum cardiac output overall you get maximum cardiac output immediately after delivery that's the best answer then second best answer is second stage of labor third best answer is late first stage of labor and fourth best answer is during 28 to 32 weeks of pregnancy you cannot see this last me when i likha 28 to 32 weeks so same question can be asked in a different format they can ask you highest chances of heart failure during pregnancy highest chances of heart failure during pregnancy are immediately after delivery followed by second stage of labor followed by late first stage of labor followed by 28 to 32 weeks of pregnancy a question which was asked in previous year mci exam was when does cardiac output come back to normal after delivery so cardiac output comes back to normal 10 days after delivery right clear to all of you what are the signs and symptoms of heart disease in pregnancy so if a female comes to you with chest pain hemoptysis clubbing progressive dyspnea orthopnea or syncopal attacks that indicates heart disease or if a patient is coming to you and uska jvp increased mil raha as i told you during pregnancy jvp remains normal to agar jvp increased mil raha that indicates heart disease i told you s2 is normal during pregnancy so agar pregnancy mein hame s2 loud aur uski splitting prominent milti hai then that is abnormal and that indicates heart disease S3 is normally heard in pregnancy but agar hame S4 sunai dena pad jaye then that's abnormal in pregnancy and that indicates heart disease if you are getting an ejection systolic murmur more than equal to grade 3 by 6 that is that indicates heart disease if you are getting diastolic murmur that indicates heart disease marked cardiomegaly indicates heart disease if you are getting clubbing cyanosis or arrhythmia that indicates heart disease during pregnancy right then please remember in all heart disease patients what is preferred vaginal delivery is preferred number 1 right number 2 when you are conducting this vaginal delivery patient will be in semi recumbent position then you are going to cut short the third uh, cut short the second stage of labor and this you are going to cut short with the help of forceps which is better than vacuum in case of heart disease patients fourth important point you have to remember you are going to do active management of third stage of labor that is something which you have to do the only thing which you have to remember is injection methyl ergometrin is contraindicated so active management of third stage of labor karte hain only contraindication is injection methyl ergometrin in all patients who deliver or uh, heart disease patients who are delivering you are not going to give them injection methyl ergometrin after delivery oxytocin de sakte hain carboprost de sakte hain right methyl ergometrin nahi dete hain mesoprost bhi de sakte hain clear to all of you 
Yes. And are you going to give them something for pain relief? Yes. So I am going to give them epidural analgesia. Why I want them to have pain relief during delivery? This is because if pain is going to be pain, then the patient will be and tachycardia se heart failure precipitate. Ho sakta hai. So I am going to give them epidural analgesia for pain relief. All these important points are for delivery uh, for vaginal delivery in uh, heart disease patients. Now, uh, Wani is asking that in all heart disease patients, do you have to do vaginal delivery? See, this is the best method of delivery in all heart disease patients. There are certain exceptions. What are the heart diseases where you go for cesarean section? Heart diseases where you go for cesarean section are any heart disease where you have the term IOTA. Option may agar iota dikhai de raha hai, that means you have to do cesarean section. So, agar option may aortic stenosis mil raha hai, ya aortic aneurysm mil raha hai, ya coctation of iota mil raha hai, ya Marfan syndrome with aortic involvement mil raha hai. Jaha kahi bhi word iota milega, that means you have to do a cesarean section number one. Number two, if your patient is on warfarin at the time of delivery. So, if your patient is on warfarin at the time of delivery, then you have to do a cesarean section. Or if your patient has had a recent MI or heart failure, in that case, you have to go for cesarean section. Clear to all of you? Otherwise, in all other cases, you go for vaginal delivery. Now, Vani is asking again about Eisenmenger. Eisenmenger may hum cesarean section nahi karte. Ideally, jo Eisenmenger ki patient hoti hai, Eisenmenger is associated with highest maternal mortality. To jo Eisenmenger ki patient hoti hai, usme na, Pregnancy is contraindicated. Just in case patient pregnant ho jati hai, to hum usse kehte hai, please get an MTP done because it is associated with highest chances of maternal mortality. But as an obstetrician, I can suggest that I can't do anything with MTP. Nahi kar sakti. If patient says, no, I am going to continue this pregnancy, in that case, I am going to admit the patient throughout her pregnancy, but delivery, we will vaginal delivery. Sahi karayenge, right? Caesarean section ke indications I have told you are only three. So don't say ki Eisenmenger is an indication for caesarean section. Clear to all of you? Yes? Okay. Now, while interpreting blood reports of a pregnant female, all of the following are considered normal except... Option A, same clotting time as prior to pregnancy. Option B, reduced factor 11. Option C, reduced platelet count. Option D, reduced reticulocyte count. Now, hematological changes are also very important during pregnancy. You should know them. Quickly tell me what is your answer. What is your answer for this question? If you are a marrow subscriber, this question, this particular question, I think I have discussed in MCQ discussion also. I am getting answers B, C, B. Good evening, Rajat. Question ka answer karo sab log. Okay. So I am getting various answers. There is only one person who has given correct answer and that is Prashu Gupta. Only Prashu has given the correct answer and correct answer is option D. So please remember in hematological system there are certain things which are going to increase in pregnancy and there are certain things which are going to decrease in pregnancy. You should make a table like this. If you are a subscriber of then you know I always make you uh, mug up or understand the hematological changes in this format only. This table is very, very important. Please remember that in increased column, you have blood volume. Blood volume increases during pregnancy and blood is made up of plasma and RBC. Plasma volume also increases in pregnancy. RBC volume also increases in pregnancy. Increase in plasma volume is more than increase in RBC volume and that is liquid component jada increase ho hai in comparison to cellular component and that is why there is hemodilution in pregnancy. 
because of this hemodilution if they ask you what happens to plasma osmolality during pregnancy it will decrease plasma viscosity will decrease hematocrit or packed cell volume will decrease what is hematocrit or packed cell volume it is rbc volume divided by plasma volume just now i told you that rbc volume also increases and plasma volume also increases in pregnancy but denominator may increase jada hota in comparison to numerator during pregnancy that is why hematocrit decreases during pregnancy now because rbc ka volume increase kar raha hai so the total amount of hemoglobin which is present in rbc will also increase that means hemoglobin mass which is measured in grams increases during pregnancy but when we talk about hemoglobin concentration that is grams per deciliter it decreases during pregnancy and that that is why there is physiological anemia in pregnancy because of this physiological anemia in pregnancy erythropoietin levels will increase in pregnancy reticulocyte count increases in pregnancy life span of rbc decreases in pregnancy now because the amount of hemoglobin is increasing that is why oxygen carrying capacity increases in pregnancy now as far as wbc and platelets is concerned wbc count increases in pregnancy platelet count decreases in pregnancy but kabhi bhi aisa nahi hoga ki it is going to go below the normal right and this is what is called as benign gestational thrombocytopenia right now in wbc it is the neutrophils which are going to increase and eosinophils which are going to decrease all clotting factors increase in pregnancy that is why pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state except for factor 11 and 13 factor 11 and 13 decrease during pregnancy ab is question ko wo kaise puchhenge they are going to ask you what happens to serum fibrinogen during pregnancy serum fibrinogen is clotting factor number 1 so because all clotting factors increase so serum fibrinogen levels increase in pregnancy now fibrinolytic activity protein c protein s and anti thrombin levels decrease during pregnancy when we talk about plasma protein the amount of plasma proteins is going to increase yani ki plasma protein mass increases during pregnancy but plasma protein concentration decreases during pregnancy right now plasma proteins may we have albumin and globulin globulin increases during pregnancy albumin decreases during pregnancy albumin is to globulin ratio normally hota hai 1.7 is to 1 pregnancy mein ye ratio ban jata hai 1 is to 1 is question ko they can also ask you in this format ki what happens to sex hormone binding globulin what happens to thyroid binding globulin during pregnancy so sex hormone binding globulin and thyroid binding globulin all of them will increase during pregnancy because globulins increase during pregnancy right so over here ha huh, please remember clotting time and bleeding time they remain same jaise heart mein cardiac cardiovascular system mein jvp remain same during pregnancy similarly clotting time and bleeding time remains normal during pregnancy so this is right factor 11 decreases that is right platelet count decreases that is right reticulocyte count decreases that is wrong reticulocyte count increases during pregnancy respiratory system ke parameters they are very confusing don't try to understand them just remember them with the technique which i am going to tell you now you have to remember all the respiratory parameters which increase during pregnancy jiske liye you are going to remember the mnemonic ictv and movie ic stands for inspiratory capacity tv stands for tidal volume mv stands for minute ventilation so ic tv and mv that is movie increase during pregnancy then remember the parameters which remain constant during pregnancy irv ko horizontally likha and irv ko vertically likha irv stands for inspiratory reserve volume then next r is for respiratory rate next v is for vital capacity so inspiratory reserve volume respiratory rate and vital capacity remain constant during pregnancy you don't have to remember what parameters decrease jab increase pata hai and constant pata hai to decrease automatically rest of the parameters are going to decrease please remember in pregnancy there is respiratory alkalosis as far as changes in renal system are concerned renal blood flow increases during pregnancy because overall blood flow increases during pregnancy 
जब रीनल ब्लड फ्लो इंक्रीज होगा तो जीएफआर भी इंक्रीज होगा जीएफआर का मतलब है फिल्टरिंग कैपेसिटी इंक्रीज होगी इन अदर वर्ड्स मोर ऑफ यूरिया यूरिक एसिड एंड क्रिएटिनिन विल बी फिल्टर्ड आउट सो सीरम यूरिया सीरम यूरिक एसिड एंड क्रिएटिनिन डिक्रीज ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी इसके अलावा यू हैव टू रिमेंबर बीएमआर इंक्रीजेस ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी टोटल T3 थ्री एंड टोटल टी फोर इंक्रीज ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी बट थाइरोइड बाइंडिंग ग्लोबल इन ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेस ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी सो जो फ्री टी थ्री एंड फ्री टी फोर होता है दैट रिमेन्स नॉर्मल इन प्रेगनेंसी राइट तो टोटल टी थ्री टी फोर बढ़ेगा थाइरोइड बाइंडिंग ग्लोबल इन बढ़ेगा लेकिन फ्री टी थ्री एंड फ्री टी फोर विल रिमेन नॉर्मल ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू नाउ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज ऑन एंटी क्वागलेंट्स इन प्रेगनेंसी अब एंटी क्वागलेंट कब देते हैं वेन एवर अ पेशेंट कम्स टू यू विद वैल्व रिप्लेसमेंट अगर पेशेंट में बायो प्रोस्थेटिक वैल्व का रिप्लेसमेंट हुआ है बायो प्रोस्थेटिक वैल्व रिप्लेसमेंट के पेशेंट्स को ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी यू हैव टू गिव देम ओनली एस्पिरिन यू डोंट हैव टू गिव देम एनी एंटी क्वागलेंट्स बट अगर क्वेश्चन मैकेनिकल वैल्व कह रहा है तो मैकेनिकल वैल्व का अगर रिप्लेस हुआ है इट हैज बीन अ मैकेनिकल वैल्व रिप्लेसमेंट देन ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी यू आर गोइंग टू गिव एंटी क्वागलेंट एंड एस्पेरिन एंड नॉन प्रेगनेंट फीमेल्स को यू गिव ओनली एंटी क्वागलेंट वॉरफेरिन रिमेंबर बायो प्रोस्थेटिक वैल्व के रिप्लेसमेंट के पेशेंट को ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी यू गिव एस्पेरिन यू डोंट गिव एनी एंटी क्वागलेंट मैकेनिकल वैल्व के पेशेंट को थ्रू आउट लाइफ एंटीक्वागलेंट की जरूरत होती है सो ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी एंड इन नॉन प्रेगनेंट स्टेट इन बोथ दीज कंडीशन यू हैव टू गिव एंटीक्वागलेंट ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी अलॉन्ग विद एंटीक्वागलेंट यू विल हैव टू गिव एस्पेरिन अब एंटीक्वागलेंट कौन सा देंगे दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द टाइम एट विच द पेशेंट इज कमिंग टू यू इन फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर अभी तक हम कहते थे कि बिकॉज वॉरफेयर कैन क्रॉस द प्लेसेंटा एंड इट कैन लीड टू कंजेनेटल मैल फॉर्मेशन इन द फीटस सो फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर में कभी भी वॉरफेयर नहीं देते द न्यू अपडेटेड गाइडलाइंस आर कि फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर में यू कैन गिव वॉरफेर इफ द डोज ऑफ वॉरफेर इज लेस दैन फाइव मिलीग्राम्स पर डे अगर पेशेंट प्रेगनेंसी से पहले वॉरफेरिन लेता था एंड वॉरफेरिन की डोज वाज लेस देन फाइव मिलीग्राम्स पर डे यू कैन कंटिन्यू इट ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी बट इफ द डोज वाज मोर देन फाइव मिलीग्राम्स पर डे देन इन फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर फ्रॉम वॉरफेरिन यू आर गोइंग टू चेंज टू लो मॉलिकुलर वेट हिपेरिन बिटवीन ट्वेल्व वीक्स टू थर्टी वीक्स You have to give warfarin to all pregnant female. The anticoagulant of choice is warfarin because warfarin is a stronger anticoagulant. Twelve weeks ke baad congenital malformation ki problem nahi rehti, and twelve weeks ke baad I need a stronger anticoagulant because pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state. Then at thirty-six weeks again from warfarin I will switch my patient to low molecular weight heparin. Why am I switching? Because I know ki after thirty-six weeks patient kabi भी लेबर में जा सकती है एंड अगर पेशेंट लेबर में गई विद वॉरफेरिन देर आर इंक्रीज चांसेस ऑफ पी पी एच सो आई एम गोइंग टू चेंज टू लो मॉलिकुलर वेट हिपेरिन वन वीक बिफोर ईडीडी और थ्री वीक्स बिफोर ईडीडी थ्री डेज बिफोर ईडीडी I am going to switch from low molecular weight heparin to unfractionated heparin. Why am I doing this? Because low molecular weight heparin ka T half longer hota hai in comparison to unfractionated heparin. So recommendations say that at least one week before EDD or at least three days before EDD, from low molecular weight heparin you should switch to unfractionated heparin. on the day of delivery you should stop all anticoagulants and you should begin anticoagulants 6 hours after vaginal delivery or 6 to 12 hours after cesarean section all those who are reading uh, my gautam nagar notes which i used to teach which are over there when i used to teach and missed there are many updates which i am sharing with you now please change all these things in your notes i know you people are just using those notes those photocopied notes to ye sare updates hain ye sare change kar lena un notes mein right so 6 hours after vaginal delivery or 6 to 12 hours after cesarean section pehle kehte the 24 hours after cesarean section now it is said 6 to 12 hours after cesarean section you are going to restart unfractionated heparin and वॉरफेरिन एंड जब आई एन आर टू पॉइंट फाइव टू थ्री के बीच में आ जाएगा तो हम विड्रॉ कर लेंगे अनफ्रैक्शनेटेड हिपारिन को हम विड्रॉ कर लेंगे हिपारिन को एंड हम कंटिन्यू रखेंगे वॉरफेरिन को 
राइट क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू ना वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इज कि 36 वीक्स पे आपको चेंज करना है टू लो मॉलिकुलर वेट अपारन थर्टी सिक्स वीक्स पे फ्रॉम वॉर फेर एंड यू हैव टू चेंज टू लो मॉलिकुलर वेट अपारन बट सपोज पेशेंट आपके पास थर्टी सिक्स वीक्स पे नहीं आई राइट एंड पेशेंट डायरेक्टली आपके पास तब आई वेन शी इज इन लेबर राइट और नियर हर ईडीडी सो प्लीज रिमेंबर अगर पेशेंट आपके पास थर्टी सिक्स वीक्स पे नहीं आई एंड पेशेंट इज ऑन वॉर फेर एंड at the time of her expected date of delivery in that case you are going to stop warfare and and you are going to plan a cesarean section i know tum logo ko bahut sare confusions hain is baat mein ki ma'am uh, why are we going to do a cesarean section if patient is on warfare and because pph ke chances to badh jayenge but remember Warfarin can cross the placenta. Now, because warfarin can cross the placenta, अगर 36 weeks के बाद हम warfarin को continue करते हैं, तो warfarin baby में जाएगा and anticoagulation cause करेगा. And then what is going to happen? Baby जब deliver करेगा vaginally, तो उसके head पे trauma पड़ेगा and because of that there can be increased chances of intracranial bleeding. And to prevent that intracranial bleeding from happening, we do cesarean section. PPH तो जब हम करेंगे cesarean section तब भी chances आए हैं and जब हम vaginal delivery करेंगे तब भी chances आए हैं. But vaginal delivery से baby में intracranial hemorrhage के chances बढ़ जाते हैं and cesarean section से we prevent that from happening. Right now, suppose your question says that patient is on warfarin and patient is in labor. A patient labor me ja chuki hai. In that case, what are you going to do? In that case, you are going to do vaginal delivery, stop warfarin, continue with vaginal delivery, and give vitamin K to mother and to the baby. Right? Simple. Okay. This is very very important anticoagulants in pregnancy. Another very important thing for you all to know is the definitions for growth period. Definitions for growth period may number one is pre-embryonic period, which is from the day of fertilization up till two weeks after that. Embryonic period is from three to eight weeks after fertilization, and this is the most teratogenic period. Right? Teratogenic period का मतलब है if baby is exposed to any radiations or drug at this time, there are highest chances. of congenital malformation fetal period is 9 weeks and after fertilization and up till delivery please note over here ye sari definitions are given from the time of fertilization they are not given in weeks of pregnancy what is the difference between weeks of pregnancy and the time of fertilization time of fertilization is the from the day when fertilization happens so if a cycle is of 28 days फर्टिलाइजेशन अगर फीमेल में डे 14 पे हो रहा है तो प्रेग फर्टिलाइजेशन तो डे 14 पे हो रहा है बिकॉज ओव्यूलेशन डे 14 पे होता है बट प्रेगनेंसी इज कैलकुलेटेड फ्रॉम हियर प्रेगनेंसी इज कैलकुलेटेड फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द लास्ट मेंस्ट्रुअल पीरियड तो वेन एवर वी से पीरियड ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी वेन एवर वी से पीरियड ऑफ जेस्टेशन वेन एवर वी से पीरियड ऑफ ए मेनोरिया all of them are calculated from first day of the last menstrual period so conventional definitions jo growth period ki hain they are not from uh, first day of last menstrual period conventional definitions are from the time after fertilization as you can see that there is a gap of 2 weeks between the first day of the last menstrual period and the time of fertilization iska kya matlab hai ki agar aap se same definitions puchi jaye in terms of period of pregnancy so just over here you are seeing embryonic period is 3 weeks to 8 weeks after fertilization so 3 weeks to 8 weeks after fertilization ka matlab hai how many weeks of pregnancy 5 to 10 weeks of pregnancy so be very careful whenever they are talking about growth period definition mein ye zarur check karna whether this definition is given from the day of fertilization or this definition is given in terms of weeks of pregnancy weeks of pregnancy mein embryonic period is 5 to 10 weeks of pregnancy and original definition is after the time after fertilization and that is 3 to 8 weeks after fertilization clear to all of you okay important points related to twins i i hope all of you are understanding this show me a thumbs up if you understood till here
quickly show me a thumbs up and then i'll tell you important points related to twin pregnancy i think there is a lag over here so i have to wait for all of you to show me a thumbs up okay thank you ritesh vipul karishma for showing a thumbs up thank you coming to twin pregnancy twin pregnancy mein important hai dizygotic monozygotic twins you all know dizygotic twins ka matlab hai two ova fertilized by two sperms and two zygotes are formed dizygotic is more common type of twin pregnancy dizygotic twins mein sex of the baby can be same or it can be different incidence of dizygotic twin varies from country to country and always dies zygotic twins may because there are two ova which are fertilized by two sperms and two zygotes are formed each zygote is going to form its own amnion and its own chorion that is why die zygotic twins hamesha die chorionic die amniotic hote hain and because overall most common is die zygotic twins that is why overall most common type of twin pregnancy is die chorionic die amniotic type of twin pregnancy right then comes monozygotic twins monozygotic twins it is the less least common lesser less common in variety monozygotic twins may there is a single ova fertilized by single sperm a single zygote is formed and then that single zygote divides into two monozygotic twins may same sex hota hai baby ka same blood group hota hai same hla typing hoti hai but they have different fingerprints please remember that incidence of monozygotic twins it remains constant throughout the world and that incidence is 1 in 250 pregnancies right monozygotic twins ki variety depends upon kab division ho raha hai if division of monozygotic twins is happening at less than 72 hours then you will get dichorionic diamniotic variety if division is happening between 4 to 8 days then monochorionic diamniotic type more than equal to 8 days then monochorionic monoamniotic and more than equal to 12 days then you get conjoined twins question agar pucha jaye most common type of twin pregnancy you are going to say dichorionic diamniotic but agar question pucha jaye most common type of monozygotic twin most common type of monozygotic twin is monochorionic diamniotic twins now डायजाइगोटिक ट्विंस में दो ओवा रिलीज होते हैं एंड दोनों सेम टाइम पे रिलीज होते हैं सेम टाइम पे फर्टिलाइज होते हैं राइट अब देर आर सर्टन रेयर कंडीशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल रिसेंटली एक ब्रिजिलियन फीमेल में देखा गया कि देर वॉज अ केस वेन दिस फीमेल डिलीवर्ड ट्विंस बट बोथ द ट्विंस फादर व डिफरेंट हाउ कुड दिस हैपन दिस हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ समथिंग विच इज कॉल्ड एज सुपर फीकंडेशन देर आर टू टर्म्स सुपर फीकंडेशन एंड सुपर फिटेशन सुपर फीकंडेशन एंड सुपर फिटेशन दोनों में यह होता है कि टू ओवा आर रिलीज at different different times and dono jo ova different time pe release ho rahe hain, they are being fertilized by two different acts of coitus difference kya hai fir dono mein difference ye hai ki super fecundation mein both the ova are being released in the same cycle whereas super fetation mein both the ova are released in different cycles right how are you going to remember सुपर फीकंडेशन में एस एंड सी दोनों आता है एस इज सेम सी इज साइकिल राइट सो सुपर फीकंडेशन का मतलब है टू ओवा आर रिलीज इन सेम साइकिल एंड दे आर फर्टिलाइज एट बाय टू डिफरेंट एक्ट्स ऑफ क्वाइटस सुपर फीकंडेशन इज अ रेयर फिनोमिना व्हिच इज सीन इन ह्यूमंस सो इट इज रेयरली सीन इन ह्यूमंस and there are high chances you may get a question on this because of a recent case which has happened super fetation ka matlab hai ki ek female pregnant hai and uske 2 months ke baad wo fir se pregnant hui because two ova are being released in two different cycles and they are being fertilized at to by two different acts of coitus right that is super fetation super fetation is not seen in humans right superfetation is not seen in humans so my pencil has discharged please write there it is not seen in humans 
clear next now very very important are differences between dichorionic diamniotic monochorionic diamniotic and monochorionic monoamniotic in differences ko samajhne ke liye it is very important that you understand how the diagrams are drawn andar wali layer ko membrane ko kehte hain amnion bar wali ko kehte hain chorion so this first image is a twin jiske apna amnion hai apna chorion hai this is second twin jiska apna amnion hai apna chorion hai this is dichorionic diamniotic सेकेंड इन ड्रॉइंग के अंदर यू कैन सी हर ट्विन के पास अपना अपना एमनियॉन है बट देर इज अ सिंगल कोरियॉन सो दिस इज मोनो कोरियॉनिक डाय एमनियोटिक एंड इन दोनों ट्विन के पास सिंगल कोरियॉन है सिंगल एमनियॉन है सो दिस इज मोनो कोरियॉनिक मोनो एमनियोटिक नाउ इफ आई आस्क यू वॉट आर द नंबर ऑफ लेयर ऑफ मेमब्रेन विच यू कैन सी बिटवीन Dichorionic diamniotic four layers of membranes. How many number of layers of membranes are between the twins in monochorionic diamniotic? Two layers. How many membranes in monochorionic monoamniotic? No layer. Right now, this means that dichorionic diamniotic will get thick membranes. Monochorionic diamniotic will get thin membranes. And monochorionic monoamniotic will get no membrane. Nahi Then vascular connection. डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक में कोई भी वैस्कुलर कनेक्शन नहीं होता मोनोकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक में डीप वैस्कुलर कनेक्शन मिलते हैं एंड दैट इज वाई ट्विन टू ट्विन ट्रांसफ्यूजन सिंड्रोम इज अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ मोनोकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक ट्विन मोनोकोरियोनिक मोनोएमनियोटिक में सुपरफिशियल वैस्कुलर कनेक्शन मिलते हैं एंड दैट इज वाई ट्विन टू ट्विन ट्रांसफ्यूजन सिंड्रोम इज लेस कॉमन ट्विन टू ट्विन ट्रांसफ्यूजन सिंड्रोम मोस्ट कॉमन किसमें होगा मोनोकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक में बिकॉज उनमें डीप वैस्कुलर कनेक्शन मिलते हैं राइट इन केस ऑफ डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक ट्विन्स डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक ट्विन्स मो डायजाइगोटिक भी हो सकते हैं मोनोजाइगोटिक भी हो सकते हैं डायजाइगोटिक हमेशा डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक होते हैं एंड मोनोजाइगोटिक इफ डिविजन इज हैपनिंग एट लेस देन 72 टू आवर्स देन दे आर डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक राइट सो दैट इज वाई डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक में सेक्स ऑफ द बेबी कैन बी सेम और इट कैन बी डिफरेंट मोनोकोरियोनिक ट्विन्स जो होते हैं वो केवल मोनोजाइगोटिक होते हैं मोनोकोरियोनिक ट्विन्स आर ऑलवेज मोनोजाइगोटिक एंड मोनोजाइगोटिक ट्विन्स में सेक्स हमेशा सेम मिलता है दैट इज वाई चाहे वो मोनोकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक हो चाहे वो मोनोकोरियोनिक मोनोएमनियोटिक हो सेक्स ऑफ द बेबी विल ऑलवेज बी द सेम नंबर ऑफ प्लेसेंटा डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक में नंबर ऑफ प्लेसेंटा कुड बी वन और इट कुड बी टू लेकिन मोनोकोरियोनिक ट्विन्स में नंबर ऑफ प्लेसेंटा विल ऑलवेज बी वन In case of dichorionic twins, on ultrasound हमें twin peak sign या lambda sign मिलता है जो कि absent होता है in case of monochorionic twins. Now specific complication. Are there any specific complications which you get in dichorionic diamniotic? No. Are there any specific complications which you get in monochorionic diamniotic? Yes. Number one is TTTS. TTTS का क्या मतलब होता है? ट्विन टू ट्विन ट्रांसफ्यूजन सिंड्रोम ड्रिंकल आई थिंक आप ये नहीं समझ पाए हो सेक्स ऑफ द ट्विन से थोड़ा सा आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन टू यू अगेन जो डायजाइगोटिक ट्विन्स होते हैं अभी अभी हमने पढ़ा कि दे आर ऑलवेज डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक मोनोजाइगोटिक ट्विन्स में अगर डिविजन हो रहा है एट लेस देन 72 टू आवर्स देन दे आर डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक इसका मतलब कि अगर हमें डायकोरियोनिक ट्विन्स मिल रहे हैं तो दे कैन बी मोनोजाइगोटिक दे कैन बी डायजाइगोटिक बट अगर हमें मोनोकोरियोनिक ट्विन्स मिल रहे हैं तो दे विल ऑलवेज बी मोनोजाइगोटिक राइट right? तो इसीलिए डायकोरियोनिक ट्विन्स बिकॉज दे कैन कम फ्रॉम डायजाइगोटिक ट्विन्स और दे कैन कम फ्रॉम मोनोजाइगोटिक ट्विन्स सेक्स ऑफ द बेबी मे बी सेम और इट मे बी डिफरेंट लेकिन जितने भी मोनोकोरियोनिक ट्विन्स होते हैं वो सारे मोनोजाइगोटिक होते हैं एंड मोनोजाइगोटिक ट्विन्स आर ऑलवेज दे ऑलवेज हैव सेम सेक्स समझ में आ गया स्पेसिफिक कॉम्प्लिकेशन मोनोकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक ट्विन्स में यू गेट फोर स्पेसिफिक कॉम्प्लिकेशन जिसपे क्वेश्चन पूछा जाता है नंबर वन ट्विन टू ट्विन ट्रांसफ्यूजन सिंड्रोम नंबर टू टैप टैप का क्या मतलब है ट्विन अनिमिया पॉलीसाइथीमिया सीक्वेंस 
twin anemia polycythemia sequence trap trap is twin reversed arterial perfusion and selective iugr these are four complications jo keval monochorionic diamniotic twins mein milte hain right monochorionic monoamniotic twins mein do complications milte hain number 1 cord entanglement number 2 conjoint twins conjoint twins are variety of monochorionic monoamniotic twins राइट वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉर्ड एंड कैंटेंगलमेंट एंड कंजॉइंट ट्विन पे क्वेश्चन पूछा जाता है ट्विन टू ट्विन ट्रांसफ्यूजन सिंड्रोम पे क्वेश्चन पूछा जाता है राइट डायकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक ट्विन की डिलीवरी होती है एट 38 एट वीक्स यू शुड डिलीवर देम बाय 38 एट वीक्स मोनोकोरियोनिक डायमनियोटिक को डिलीवर करना चाहिए बिटवीन 34 फोर टू थर्टी सेवन वीक्स एंड अगर ट्विन टू ट्विन ट्रांसफ्यूजन सिंड्रोम हो गया है देन एट थर्टी फोर वीक्स एंड मोनोकोरियोनिक मोनोएमनियोटिक को सिजेरियन सेक्शन से डिलीवर करते हैं बाय थर्टी टू टू थर्टी फोर वीक्स ये सबसे ज्यादा क्वेश्चन यही पूछा जाता है मोनोकोरियोनिक मोनोएमनियोटिक की टाइम ऑफ डिलीवरी इज थर्टी टू टू थर्टी फोर वीक्स बाय सिजेरियन सेक्शन अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच यू पीपल गेट कंफ्यूज एंड यू हैव ऑल रॉन्ग आंसर फॉर इट इज वॉट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन वेराइटी ऑफ कंजॉइंट ट्विंस मोस्ट कॉमन वेराइटी ऑफ कंजॉइंट ट्विन इज पैराफेगस पैराफेगस ट्विंस में अबडोमिन एंड पेल्विस का फ्यूजन मिलता है एंड अगर पैराफेगस ऑप्शन में नहीं दिया है देन यू आर गोइंग टू गो फॉर थोराकोफेगस राइट लीस्ट कॉमन वेराइटी ऑफ कंजॉइंट ट्विंस इज रैकी फैगस रैकी फैगस का मतलब होता है व्हेन द वर्टेब्रल कॉलम ऑफ द ट्विंस आर जॉइंट अगर रैकी फैगस ऑप्शन में नहीं दिया है तब मार्क करोगे क्रेनियो फैगस वेर द हेड ऑफ द बेबी इज जॉइंट राइट सो बेस्ट आंसर फॉर मोस्ट कॉमन वेराइटी पैराफेगस फॉलोड बाय थोराकोफेगस बेस्ट आंसर फॉर लीस्ट कॉमन वेराइटी इज रैकी फेगस फॉलोड बाय क्रेनियो clear to all of you yes for curiosity what is the best investigation tvs is the best investigation what is the best time to do the uh, ultrasound to know curiosity 11 to 13 weeks curiosity kaise determine karenge curiosity aise determine karenge that if twin peak sign is positive If twin peak sign is positive, it is dichorionic diamniotic twins. Why do I want to know chorionicity? Why am I wanting to know chorionicity? This is because prognosis depends on chorionicity. Prognosis depends on chorionicity. Always dichorionic twins will have better prognosis. always dichorionic twins will have better prognosis why dichorionic twins will have better prognosis because monochorionic twins mein bahut sare complications milte hain monochorionic diamniotic mein bhi complications milte hain monochorionic monoamniotic mein bhi complications milte hain jabki dichorionic twins mein you don't get many any specific complication right overall if they ask you what is the most common fetal complication of twin pregnancy overall most common fetal complication of twin pregnancy is prematurity why does this happen this happens because of preterm labor right now what is the most common presentation in twin pregnancy both twins cephalic that is the most common presentation vaginal delivery is possible only if first twin is cephalic if first twin is breech or transverse lie you have to do a cesarean section what are the indications for cesarean section indications for cesarean section are if first twin is breech or cephalic in case of monochorionic monoamniotic twins and in case of conjoint twins in a monochorionic monoamniotic and conjoint twins you have to do a cesarean section between 32 to 34 weeks now suppose you have a twin pregnancy jisme previous history thi cesarean section ki can you try vaginal delivery after cesarean section in case of twins yes you can try vaginal delivery after cesarean section if first twin is cephalic and second twin is transverse lie देन हम क्या करते हैं फर्स्ट ट्विन की विजाइनल डिलीवरी कराते हैं एंड सेकेंड ट्विन के लिए हम इंटरनल पोडालिक वर्जन करते हैं इंटरनल पोडालिक वर्जन से हम ट्विन को कन्वर्ट कर देते हैं इन टू ब्रीच सो हम 
ट्रांसवर्स लाई को कन्वर्ट करते हैं इन टू ब्रीच एंड देन वी गो फॉर ब्रीच एक्सट्रैक्शन राइट दिस इज द हाउ यू मैनेज ए फर्स्ट ट्विन इज सिफेलिक एंड सेकेंड ट्विन इज ट्रांसवर्स लाई नाउ देर आर टू वर्जन विच यू हैव टू रिमेंबर वन इज इंटरनल पोडालिक वर्जन and the other one is external cephalic version right internal podalic version it is done in case of twin pregnancy when first twin is cephalic second twin is transverse lie and transverse lie is converted into breech whereas external cephalic version is done in a singleton pregnancy and at what time are you going to do it are you are going to do it at uh, at 36 weeks or beyond 36 weeks of pregnancy and in sme kya karte hain single pregnancy should either be breech or transverse lie and you convert it into cephalic so internal podalic version mein aap breech mein convert kar rahe ho external cephalic version mein aap uh, cephalic mein convert kar rahe ho why this term internal and external internal and external is referring to the position of the hand internal podalic version mein hum haath ko andar lekar jate hain inside the uterus and then baby ko convert karte hain into breech external cephalic version mein hum per abdominally baby ko convert karte hain into cephalic right internal podalic version mein because you are taking your hand inside the uterus you are going to do it in ot under general anesthesia whereas external cephalic version is done in opd and you don't need any anesthesia at the most aapko uterine relaxant dena hai terbutaline dena hai internal podalic version mein there is a risk of uterine rupture whereas external cephalic version mein there is a risk of fetal distress if there is previous history of cesarean section internal podalic version is absolutely contraindicated whereas external cephalic version is relatively contraindicated if there is previous history of cesarean section so these are important points which you needed to know on twin pregnancy clear to all of you coming to important points related to abortion if they ask you what is the most common cause of a single isolated first trimester or second trimester abortion so this is isolated or single abortion right so the most common cause of first trimester or second trimester single episode of abortion is a chromosomal defect best answer for this is aneuploidy to agar options mein aneuploidy likha hai that is the best answer agar aneuploidy nahi diya hai then the second best answer is trisomy agar trisomy bhi nahi diya hai then the third best answer is monosomy x and agar wo bhi nahi diya hai then the fourth best answer is ट्राइसोमी 16. अगर ऑप्शन में दिया है मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ अबॉर्शन एंड दी ऑप्शन आर ऑप्शन ए सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस ऑप्शन बी एप्ला सिंड्रोम ऑप्शन सी मोनोसोमी एक्स ऑप्शन डी ट्राइसोमी 16. अब बिकॉज ऑप्शन में एन्यूप्लॉयडी नहीं दिया बिकॉज ऑप्शन में ट्राइसोमी नहीं दिया चॉइस इज बिटवीन मोनोसोमी एक्स एंड ट्राइसोमी 16. सो आई एम टेलिंग यू दैट द थर्ड बेस्ट आंसर इज मोनोसोमी एक्स तो हम ट्राइसोमी 16 नहीं कहेंगे हम आंसर बोलेंगे मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज मोनोसोमी एक्स बट अगर ऑप्शन में यह दिया है दैट दे हैव आस्ड यू मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन एंड ऑप्शन में दिया है ऑप्शन ए सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस ऑप्शन बी एप्ला ऑप्शन सी ट्राइसोमी एंड ऑप्शन डी मोनोसोमी एक्स ऐसे केस में यू आर गोइंग टू चूज ट्राइसोमी एज द आंसर सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस सीक्वेंस इन विच यू आर गोइंग टू चूज योर आंसर नाउ इफ दे आस्क यू मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ रिकरेंट अबॉर्शन रिकरेंट अबॉर्शन में द मोस्ट कॉमन ग्रुप which can lead to abortions is endocrine causes for example thyroid uh, hypothyroidism can lead to recurrent abortions uh, uncontrolled diabetes can lead to recurrent abortions increased prolactin levels can lead to recurrent abortions pcos can lead to recurrent abortions so the most common cause in group is endocrine causes followed by uterine causes followed by apla that is anti phospholipid antibody syndrome followed by chromosomal defect if they ask you which chromosomal defect leads to recurrent abortions please do not say aneuploidy leads to recurrent abortions aneuploidy leads to one abortion single episode of abortion the chromosomal defect which can lead to recurrent abortions is balanced translocation of chromosomes now agar 
ऑप्शन में एंडोक्रीन वर्ड नहीं दिया है ऑप्शन में सिंगल वर्ड्स दिए हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल योर क्वेश्चन इज मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ रिकरेंट अबॉर्शन एंड इन द ऑप्शन इट इज गिवेन हाइपोथाइरोडिज्म इट इज गिवेन सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस इट इज गिवेन एप्ला एंड इट इज गिवेन सेप्टेट यूट्रस so yahan pe you are going to answer as apla right why because the single most important cause which can lead to abortions recurrent abortions is apla but agar options mein ye na diya hota hypothyroidism ki jagah de diya hota endocrine causes so remember group wale causes will always be more in comparison to a single cause then your answer would have been endocrine cause राइट right? तो अगर ग्रुप दिया है ग्रुप में मोस्ट कॉमन इज एंडोक्रीन कॉज ग्रुप एंड सिंगल कॉज दिया है तो ग्रुप विल ऑलवेज बी प्रेफर्ड इन कंपैरिजन टू अ सिंगल कॉज लेकिन अगर ग्रुप नहीं दिया है सिंगल सिंगल कॉजेस दिए हैं हाइपोथायरोडिज्म दिया है सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस दिया है एप्ला दिया है देन यू आर गोइंग टू प्रेफर एप्ला आई यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑल ऑफ यू यस ना Please remember, cervical incompetence leads to second trimester abortions. So it leads to second trimester recurrent abortions. कभी भी cervical incompetence की वजह से first trimester recurrent abortion नहीं होगा. Torch infections and syphilis they never lead to recurrent abortion. So torch infections can never lead to recurrent abortions. Syphilis can never lead to recurrent abortions. So a question coming up your way is a G5 patient. P1 patient comes for first antenatal visit she has history of previous three second trimester losses and she is advised the procedure which is shown in the image identify the procedure so is patient ke previous three second trimester abortions hain and you all know that second trimester recurrent abortions ka मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर रिकरेंट अबॉर्शन अगर हो रहे हैं तो यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस एंड सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस में यू डू सर्कलाज प्रोसीजर द सर्कलाज प्रोसीजर विच इज डन कॉमनली इज यू गिव अ पर्स स्ट्रिंग फ्यूचर इस तरीके से पर्स स्ट्रिंग फ्यूचर देते हैं विच इज कॉल्ड एज मैकडोनल्ड सर्कलाज राइट सो ओवर हेयर सर्वाइकल इनकॉम्पिटेंस प्लीज रिमेंबर it there is in cervical incompetence you should suspect when you are getting history of painless recurrent second trimester abortion it never leads to first trimester abortion management of cervical incompetence is cerclage surgery cerclage kab karte hain agar patient hame history de rahi hai two ya more than two second trimester abortions ki तब सर्कलाज karte hain agar patient hame history de rahi hai one second trimester abortion ki ya one प्री टर्म लेबर की अर्ली प्री टर्म लेबर की इन दैट केस हमें टीवीएस करना होता है एंड अगर सर्वाइकल लेंथ लेस देन 2.5 सेंटीमीटर्स आती है राइट right? तब करते हैं सर्वाइकल सर्कलाज सो व्हाट इज द इंडिकेशन फॉर डूइंग सर्कलाज अगर क्वेश्चन में दिया है कि टू सेकंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन है तो सर्कलाज करेंगे अगर क्वेश्चन में दिया है वन सेकंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन है तो नेक्स्ट स्टेप होगा कि सर्वाइकल लेंथ को मेजर करो एंड इफ सर्वाइकल लेंथ इज लेस देन टू सेंटीमीटर तब सर्वाइकल सर्कलाज करेंगे समटाइम्स पेशेंट हमारे पास आएगी बिटवीन फोर्टीन टू ट्वेंटी वीक्स एंड उसका सर्विक्स ऑलरेडी डायलेटेड होगा ऐसी केसेस में भी हम सर्वाइकल सर्कलाज कर सकते हैं राइट बट दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच आई थिंक पीजी शुड रिमेंबर यू शुडंट रिमेंबर दिस इज नॉट फॉर यू यू जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस मच कि इफ देयर इज हिस्ट्री ऑफ टू सेकंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन ऐसे केस में टीवीएस भी करने की जरूरत नहीं है ऐसे केस में लेंथ ऑफ द सर्विक्स मेजर करने की जरूरत नहीं है इफ देर इज हिस्ट्री ऑफ टू सेकंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज सर्कलाज इफ देर इज हिस्ट्री ऑफ वन सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज टीवीएस राइट एंड टीवीएस पे अगर लेंथ ऑफ द सर्विक्स लेस देन 2.5 सेंटीमीटर आई तभी सर्वाइकल सर्कलाज करेंगे व्हाट इज द टाइम फॉर डूइंग सर्कलाज अर्लीएस्ट यू कैन डू इट बिटवीन 12 टू 14 वीक्स सो सपोज सपोज आपको कंफ्यूज करने के लिए क्वेश्चन देते हैं दैट देर इज अ फीमेल हु गिव्स यू हिस्ट्री ऑफ टू सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन देर आर टू सेकेंड ट्राइमेस्टर अबॉर्शन राइट 
and third time she has conceived and this patient has come to you at 10 weeks of pregnancy what will your next step be a patient 10 weeks of pregnancy pe hai, and she has history of two second trimester abortions definitely because there is history of two second trimester abortions i am so options me diya hoga you are going to measure to do, do a tvs for cervical length option b you are going to do cervical circlage at 12 to 14 weeks option c immediate cervical circlage so you are going to mark your answer at cervical circlage between 12 to 14 weeks. Do not say immediate cervical circlage. Because 10 weeks pe nahi karte cervical circlage. You do cervical circlage between 12 to 14 weeks. Because there is history of two second trimester abortions. I don't need to do a TVS to measure cervical length. Agar question me diya hota one second trimester abortion. Then my answer would have been I am going to do a TVS. Are you understanding all of you? This is a very very important question. I want all of you to mark this question correct if it comes to you. Yes? Okay. Now, circlage may McDonald's circlage ya Shadotkar circlage, McDonald's circlage may you are going to apply purse string sutures. When do you remove the suture? You remove the suture at 37 weeks, right? When is circlage contraindicated? Circlage is contraindicated if membranes are ruptured. So, in case of ruptured membranes, it is contraindicated. In case of chorioamnionitis, it is uh, contraindicated. In case of gross fetal anomalies, it is contraindicated. Right? In case of placenta previa, it is a relative contraindication. So, you have to remember membranes ruptured, hai, it is contraindicated. Chorioamnionitis, hai, it is contraindicated. Gross fetal anomalies, hai, it is contraindicated. I know my handwriting is very bad and especially when I write fast, it becomes all the more worse. So, that is why I am repeating everything again. Gross fetal anomalies, mein, it is contraindicated. Relative contraindication is placenta previa. Clear to all of you? Very, very important cervical incompetence and cervical circlage. Then you can get questions on types of abortion. Jab bhi question aayega types of abortion mein, you have to see whether, uh, you know, there is history of passage of product of conception or there is no history of passage of product of conception. Agar quest options mein diya hai ki there is history of passage of product of conception, then the next thing which you have to see is os is closed ya os is open. Os closed hai to your diagnosis is complete abortion. Os open hai to then your diagnosis is incomplete abortion. Incomplete abortion may you go for suction evacuation and you complete that process right if option may diya hai there is no history of passage of product of conception then look in the question ki os closed hai ki os open hai agar os open hai then it is a case of inevitable abortion and agar os closed hai either it could be threatened abortion or it could be missed abortion if height of the uterus is equal to the period of gestation it is a case of threatened abortion if height of the uterus is less than the period of gestation it is a case of missed abortion right so that is how you come to know which type of abortion it is now before i tell you other things quickly let us talk about mtp act mtp act it came in 1971 and it's amendment hua tha in 2021 I mean, MTP Act may kut chije same rahi even after amendment. And one of the things which has not changed even after amendment is who can give consent. So, consent ke liye only females' consent is needed, male consent is not needed, partner's consent is not needed. If female is less than 18 years or if she is mentally retarded, then guardian's consent is needed. What is the qualification which is needed for a doctor to do MTP? Number one, the doctor should have either MD, MS, diploma or degree, uh, diploma, degree or DNB in OBS and gynae. So there are certain states which give MD OBS and gynae, certain states give MS in OBS and gynae. So chai aap MD OBS and gynae mein, chai MS OBS and gynae mein, chai DGO ho. 
चाहे डीएनबी हो दीज पीपल कैन परफॉर्म एम नंबर टू अ रजिस्टर्ड मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर कैन परफॉर्म एम इफ द रजिस्टर्ड मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर हैज असिस्टेड इन 25 केसेस ऑफ एम जिसमें से एटलीस्ट इन फाइव केसेस ही और शी शुड हैव बीन a primary surgeon then a registered medical practitioner can also do mtp if he or she has done house job in obs and gynae for 6 months suppose mtp is performed by a person who is not qualified to do mtp in that case they can get imprisonment for 2 years which can extend up till 7 years right age proof is not needed for mtp marriage proof is not needed for mtp mtp can be done in unmarried females now if a female says that the pregnancy is result of a rape then police complaint of rape is not needed right patient's name's confidentiality has to be maintained and ye ek bahut important point aaya hai in the amendment इससे पहले भी कहा जाता था कि नेम की कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी होनी चाहिए बट नाउ दे से कि इफ दिस नेम्स कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी इज नॉट मेंटेन्ड इट कैन रिजल्ट इन इंप्रिजनमेंट फॉर वन ईयर अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज कि एम के रिकॉर्ड्स को एक हॉस्पिटल को कब तक मेंटेन करना चाहिए सो रिकॉर्ड ऑफ एम दे शुड बी मेंटेन्ड फॉर फाइव ईयर्स राइट नाउ then comes what are the changes which have come from 1971 to amendment in 2021 so mtp agar blanket question pucha jaye earlier mtp could be done only up till uh, 20 weeks now it can be done up till 24 weeks but aisa nahi hai ki har condition mein you can do it up till 24 weeks you can do mtp up till 24 weeks in a minor female in rape cases in incest cases in mentally retarded females and if there is congenital anomaly of the fetus suppose pregnancy is a result of contraceptive failure then even now mtp has to be done only up till 20 weeks you cannot do mtp up till 24 weeks in case of contraceptive failure right in case of fetal anomaly you can do mtp up till 24 weeks but if there is severe congenital anomaly then there is no upper limit for doing mtp and who is going to decide the severity ki ye severe hai ki nahi hai this will be decided by a medical board and this medical board will be formed by four people number 1 a gynecologist number 2 a pediatrician number 3 a radiologist and number 4 a person who is assigned by the state right now earlier a single doctor's opinion was needed up till 12 weeks and between 12 to 20 weeks two doctors opinion was needed now a single doctor's opinion is needed up till 20 weeks and between 20 to 24 weeks two doctors opinion is needed right so these are important points which you have to remember about mtp please remember up till 7 weeks the best method for doing mtp is medical abortion between 7 to 12 weeks best method is suction evacuation now in india medical abortion can be done up till 7 weeks who kehta hai ki you can do medical abortion up till 9 weeks so till 7 weeks ka protocol is on left side between 7 to 9 weeks ka protocol is on right side so up till 7 weeks if you are doing medical abortion you are going to do it as an op on opd basis between 7 to 9 weeks agar aap medical abortion kar rahe ho aap patient ko admit karoge and then you are going to do mtp on day 1 whether you are doing mtp up till 7 weeks or you are doing between 7 to 9 weeks on day 1 you are going to give 200 mg of mifepristone that is a single tablet of mifepristone day 3 pe fir aap patient ko call karoge and misoprost doge in case of uh, mtp up till 7 weeks aapko patient ko dobara se bulana padega in case of uh, mtp between 7 to 9 weeks aap patient ko admit karoge right and now how much mesoprost you are going to give up till 7 weeks you give 400 micrograms of mesoprost between 7 to 9 weeks you give 800 micrograms of mesoprost is mesoprost ko you can give orally you can give sublingually you can give vaginally any ways you can give 
and then on day 15 you are going to call out your patient for follow up jab aap misoprost dete ho uske 24 hours ke baad patient ko bleeding start ho jati hai and then on 15th day you are going to call the patient again for follow up follow up mein you are going to ask her whether her bleeding has stopped or not agar patient ki bleeding stop ho gayi there is no need for ultrasound right so in medical abortion there is no need to get an ultrasound done only if your patient says ki nahi abhi tak bleeding stop nahi hui then in that case ultrasound is done otherwise in case of follow up you don't need to do any ultrasound right so up till 7 weeks the best method for doing abortion is medical abortion between 7 to 12 weeks best method for doing abortion is suction evacuation suction evacuation is done using a carmen scanella right and uh, in the in this the carmen scanella is connected to a suction machine the number of carmen cannula which you are going to use will correspond to the gestational age in weeks very very important question to agar patient 10 weeks pregnant hai to hum 10 number cannula lenge agar patient 12 weeks pregnant hai to hum 12 number cannula lenge suppose 10 a uh, patient to uh, 11 weeks pregnant hai and aapke paas 10 number hai 12 number hai 11 number nahi hai in that case you have to pick one less than gestational age best hota hai ki aap corresponding to gestational age wala cannula uthao but agar wo nahi hai then you have to pick up one number which is less to so, agar patient 11 weeks pregnant hai hamare paas 10 bhi hai and 12 bhi hai then i am going to pick up 10 number cannula i am not going to pick up 12 number cannula the pressure which is generated during suction evacuation is 600 mm of mercury clear to all of you so these are the important points which you have to remember about abortion important points on ectopic pregnancy if they ask you what is the most common site for ectopic pregnancy it is fallopian tube in fallopian tube the most common site is ampulla followed by isthmus followed by infundibulum and then it is interstitium most common non tubal site is ovary most common site for tubal abortion is ampulla most common site for tubal rupture is isthmus ectopic pregnancy ends the earliest at isthmus ectopic pregnancy ends the last so if they ask you ectopic pregnancy tube mein kab last mein end hoti hai in tube it is going to end the last if ectopic pregnancy occurs in interstitium when ectopic pregnancy occurs in interstitium interstitium is the part of the fallopian tube which is nearest to the uterus so the myometrium of the uterus supports the ectopic pregnancy at the interstitium and that is why if ectopic pregnancy is happening in interstitium it is going to last for a longer time and that is why it is called as the dangerous variety of ectopic pregnancy because jab ye ectopic pregnancy end hogi there will be a lot of bleeding right but overall ectopic pregnancy end hoti hai last mein abdominal ectopic tube may it is going to end the last or it is going to survive for the longest time in interstitium but overall it is going to survive for the longest time in abdomen least common site of ectopic pregnancy if they ask you least common site for ectopic pregnancy is a cervical ectopic or a cesarean ectopic now sometimes they ask you questions on the criteria's names so cervical ectopic ko diagnose karne ke liye criteria is parman or rubin criteria ovarian ectopic ke liye spiegelberg criteria and abdominal ectopic ke liye studi from criteria management of ectopic pregnancy management ko divide karna hota hai two categories mein ruptured ectopic and unruptured ectopic ruptured ectopic mein question aayega that there is a female who has 6 to 10 weeks of amenorrhea ya 6 to 10 weeks of pregnancy her urine pregnancy test is positive and patient has come to you in shock ya to question mein shock diya hoga ya diya hoga ki caldocentesis kiya and you are getting non clotting blood so whether they say ki patient shock mein hai ya whether they say caldocentesis kiya and non clotting blood aaya both of them mean that it is a case of ruptured ectopic अब रप्चर डेक्टॉपिक के केस में इफ दे आस्क यू द नेक्स्ट स्टेप डू नॉट बी इन अ हरी टू से सर्जरी लुक एट द क्वेश्चन वेरी केयरफुली अगर क्वेश्चन में दिया है कि गार्डिंग एंड रिजिडिटी आर प्रेजेंट 
अगर गार्डिंग एंड रिजिडिटी प्रेजेंट है तो दैट मीन्स आई एम हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर इट इज अ केस ऑफ रप्चर डेक्टॉपिक इन दैट केस आई एम गोइंग टू से आई एम गोइंग टू डू सर्जरी आई एम गोइंग टू डू लेप्रोटमी आई विल ओपन दी अपडोम एंड सर्जरी कौन सी करेंगे आई विल डू अलपिन जेक्टमी आई विल रिमूव द रप्चर ट्यूब उस रप्चर ट्यूब को निकाल देंगे बट अगर क्वेश्चन में गार्डिंग रिजिडिटी नहीं दिया नहीं मैंशन किया एंड आपसे पूछा जा रहा है वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप देन इन दैट केस फर्स्ट बी श्योर दैट यू आर डीलिंग विद रप्चर डेक्टॉपिक एंड हाउ कैन यू बी श्योर दैट यू आर डीलिंग विद रप्चर डेक्टॉपिक बाई डूइंग अ फास्ट अल्ट्रासाउंड सो देन इन दैट केस योर नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज फास्ट एंड अगर फास्ट में यू आर श्योर यू आर डीलिंग विद रप्चर डेक्टॉपिक देन यू आर गोइंग टू डू अ लेप्रोटमी क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू येस सो प्लीज रिमेंबर रप्चर डेक्टॉपिक के केस में क्वेश्चन में गार्डिंग एंड रिजिडिटी दिया है तो नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज सर्जरी दैट इज लेप्रोटमी एंड कौन सी सर्जरी करते हैं यू डू अलपिन जेक्टमी राइट बट अगर गार्डिंग एंड रिजिडिटी नहीं दिया है देन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज फास्ट अल्ट्रासाउंड एंड फास्ट अल्ट्रासाउंड से वंस यू आर श्योर दैट इट इज अ केस ऑफ रप्चर डेक्टॉपिक देन यू आर गोइंग टू गो फॉर लेप्रोटमी क्लियर Now, if a question comes on unruptured ectopic, unruptured ectopic may they are going to give you a triad. What triad they are going to give you? They are going to say that patient had amenorrhea, plus she had bleeding PV, plus she had pain in abdomen. The most consistent sign of ectopic or most consistent symptom of ectopic pregnancy is pain in abdomen. So question में दिया होगा कि एमेनोरिया है पेशेंट को थोड़ी बहुत ब्लीडिंग हुई पेशेंट को एंड पेशेंट को पेन इन अपडोबिन हुआ है सो आई एम सस्पेक्टिंग एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी राइट वानी प्लीज रिमेंबर रप्चर्ड एक्टॉपिक के केस में सेल्पिंग गोस्टमी नहीं करते बेटा दैट इज वाई आई टेल यू सेल्पिंग गोस्टमी कब करते हैं I cannot tell you. I cannot clear your concepts during a small lecture. But remember each and everything which I am telling you. Ruptured ectopic ke case me, kevel ek surgery karte hain and that is salpingectomy. Agar salpingostomy mujhe batana hota, I would have written it there. Ruptured ectopic me only and only salpingectomy. Whether your patient's family is complete or not complete, in all cases. In ruptured ectopic, there is only one surgery, salpingectomy. Clear? Now coming to unruptured ectopic. Unruptured ectopic ke case me, if they ask you what is the next step, next step always is TVS. अब कई बार TVS की findings दी होंगी and they will ask you the next step. तो अगर TVS की finding में दिया है कि a gestational sac and yolk sac is seen in the tube. gestational sac and yolk sac in the tube is confirmed of ectopic pregnancy fir hame aur kuch nahi karna immediately hame management karna hai and unruptured ectopic ka management is medical management right so suppose your question says that there is a female who comes to you with amenorrhea of 6 to 8 weeks she has pain in abdomen on tvs uh, her upt is positive when a tvs was done a gestational sac and a yolk sac were seen in the tube what is the next step so in that case please next step hcg mat bolna agar gestational sac and yolk sac dikh raha hai fallopian tube mein so this is 100% sure that you are dealing with unruptured ectopic so next step is medical management but agar aapko tvs finding in mein se kuch di hai agar tvs mein aapko diya hai empty uterus अगर टीवीएस में दिया है रिंग ऑफ फायर साइन अगर टीवीएस में दिया है कॉम्प्लेक्स एडनेक्सल मास इन तीनों में से कोई फाइंडिंग दी है दीज फाइंडिंग्स आर नॉट डायग्नोस्टिक ऑफ एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी तो इन फाइंडिंग्स के बाद द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज आई हैव टू बी फर्स्ट श्योर दैट आई एम डीलिंग विद अनरप्चर्ड एक्टॉपिक एंड इन ऑर्डर टू बी श्योर आई विल डू अ बीटा एच so agar question mein diya hai that there is a pregnant female who has come to you with 6 to 8 weeks of amenorrhea she has pain in abdomen on tvs an empty uterus is seen what is the next step please do not jump and say medical management empty uterus is not a confirmed finding and empty uterus agar mil raha hai to next step is beta hcg agar question mein diya hai ki on tvs ring of fire sign is seen so again do not say it is confirmatory for ectopic pregnancy it is not confirmatory for ectopic pregnancy in that case also the next step is beta hcg right 
बीटा एच के बारे में आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू रिमेंबर वॉट इज दैट वैल्यू ऑफ बीटा एच सी जी एट विच इन ऑल इंट्रा यूट्राइन प्रेगनेंसीज अ जेस्टेशनल सैक शुड बी सीन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज क्रिटिकल टाइटर ऑफ बीटा एच सी जी एंड दैट क्रिटिकल टाइटर ऑफ बीटा एच सी जी फॉर टी वी एस इज टू थाउजेंड इंटरनेशनल यूनिट्स राइट सो दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो टू थाउजेंड इंटरनेशनल यूनिट्स ऑफ बीटा एच सी जी पे इन ऑल केसेस ऑफ इंट्रा यूट्राइन प्रेगनेंसी हंड्रेड परसेंट केसेज ऑफ इंट्रा यूट्राइन प्रेगनेंसी में यू विल सी अ जेस्टेशनल सैक सो हम बीटा एच सी जी की वैल्यूज को मेजर करेंगे एंड अगर बीटा एच सी जी टू थाउजेंड से ज्यादा है वट डज दैट इंडिकेट इफ बीटा एच सी जी इज मोर दैन टू थाउजेंड एंड देर इज एम टी यूट्रस इसका क्या मतलब है इसका मतलब है कि नाउ आई एम श्योर दैट इट इज अ केस ऑफ एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी दैट इज वाई आई टोल्ड यू दैट इफ यू आर गेटिंग एम टी यूट्रस इफ यू आर गेटिंग रिंग ऑफ फायर साइन If you are getting complex at an excel mass, then the next step is beta HCG. Now suppose question me diya hai ki beta HCG value is beta HCG value is less than two thousand. Ab kya karenge? Agar beta HCG ki value less than two thousand hai, then I am going to repeat beta HCG after forty eight hours. right and after 48 hours if i see that the value nearly doubles this means it is a case of intra uterine pregnancy if value decreases this means it is a case of abortion and if value increases but it doesn't double then that means it's a case of ectopic pregnancy and that is why i told you ki jab bhi i am in doubt so in these three cases i am in doubt in this case my next step is beta hcg and based on beta hcg i am going to first confirm whether i am dealing with abortion whether i am dealing with intrauterine pregnancy or ectopic clear to all of you Yes. Now, for unruptured ectopic, best management is medical management, and the drug which you are going to use, sorry, and the drug which you are going to use will be methotrexate. Methotrexate is given as a single dose in case of ectopic pregnancy, right? Medical management ka absolute indication hai. Uh, I mean, the absolute requirement are that mother should be stable. right so it should be a tubal unruptured pregnancy you should get an unruptured pregnancy then only you can do medical management size of the ectopic should be less than 3.5 cm hcg values should be less than 5000 international units and ectopic pregnancy mein you shouldn't get any cardiac activity so isme se do baatein bahut important hain jo yaad rakhni hai कि मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट हम तभी करते हैं जब अनरप्चर्ड एक टॉपिक होगा मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट के लिए साइज ऑफ दैट टॉपिक शुड बी लेस देन 3.5 सेंटीमीटर एंड एच वैल्यू शुड बी लेस देन 5000 इंटरनेशनल यूनिट्स राइट नाउ 3.5 या लेटेस्ट आया है 4 सेंटीमीटर क्लियर Now surgery कब करते हैं ectopic pregnancy में surgery is the treatment of choice for ruptured ectopic. Ruptured ectopic में always एक ही surgery करते हैं and that is salpingectomy. Whether the family is complete or not complete doesn't matter. Ruptured ectopic है तो एक ही surgery and that is salpingectomy. Unruptured ectopic में surgery is not the treatment of choice. अगर आप methotrexate use नहीं कर सकते for example HCG सी जी की वैल्यूज आर टेन थाउजेंड अब इफ एच सी जी वैल्यूज आर टेन थाउजेंड आई कैन नॉट गिव मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट देन आई एम गोइंग टू गिव सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट एंड सर्जरी नाउ डिपेंड्स अपॉन वेदर द फैमिली इज कंप्लीट और नॉट whether the family is complete or not if family is not complete then the surgery which you do is linear salpingostomy and if family is complete the surgery which you do is salpingectomy right salpingostomy if family is not complete family complete salpingectomy प्लीज रिमेंबर एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी में कभी भी ओवरी रिमूव नहीं करते अनलेस एन अंटल इट इज एन ओवेरियन एक्टॉपिक तो सैल्पिंगो ऊफर एक्टमी इज नॉट डन 
राइट नाउ टेकिंग अप टू ऑफ योर क्वेश्चन डॉक्टर एस हुसैन इज सेइंग कि परसेंटेज में एचसीजी की वैल्यूज कितनी इंक्रीज होती हैं तो हम जनरली हम कहते हैं कि एचसीजी वैल्यूज डबल आफ्टर एवरी 48 एट आवर्स इन इंट्रा यूट्राइन प्रेगनेंसी बट इट इज नॉट डबल एक्चुअली डबल नहीं होती एक्चुअली जो इंक्रीज मिलता है दैट इज बिटवीन थर्टी टू सिक्सटी वेर एज ए टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी में जो इंक्रीज मिलता है दैट इज लेस देन थर्टी थ्री परसेंट राइट सो अगर परसेंटेज बट दिस परसेंटेज इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आई एन आई सेट दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर नीट फॉर यू पीपल जस्ट रिमेंबर दैट द वैल्यूज आर नियरली गोइंग टू डबल इन एक टॉपिक इन इन इंट्रा यूट्राइन प्रेगनेंसी एंड दे विल नॉट डबल इन एक टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी ना अजय इज आस्किंग की इफ कार्डियक एक्टिविटी इज प्रेजेंट वॉट डू वी डू इफ कार्डियक एक्टिविटी इज प्रेजेंट इन दैट केस प्रेफरेबली यू शुड गो फॉर सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट राइट बट अगर पेशेंट इंसिस्ट करती है देन यू मे डू मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट बट देन द चांसेस ऑफ फेलियर ऑफ मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट आर हाई इफ कार्डियक एक्टिविटी इज प्रेजेंट दैट इज वाई कार्डियक एक्टिविटी इज अ रेलेटिव कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन राइट तो अगर कार्डियक एक्टिविटी प्रेजेंट है दैट्स अ रेलेटिव कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन फॉर नॉट डूइंग मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट राइट ऐसा नहीं है कि हम कर ही नहीं सकते मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट बट चांसेस ऑफ फेलियर ऑफ मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट विल बी हाई सो इफ इन योर क्वेश्चन दे से कार्डियक Activity is present. It is better you mark the answer as surgical management. Clear? Right. So this is what you had to remember for ectopic pregnancy. Now coming quickly to molar pregnancy. In molar pregnancy, you have to remember the differences between complete mole and partial mole. Complete mole का most common karyotype is 46 xx. In 90% cases, it is 46 xx. In complete mole, uh, mole कैसे बनता है? If there is an empty ova and that empty ova is fertilized by a single sperm, and फिर इस single sperm का chromosome number duplicates. In other words, In a complete mole, only paternal genes are present. Maternal genes are absent. A single ova is fertilized by a single sperm. Ova is empty. It doesn't have any genetic material. Jitna bhi genetic material is present in sperm that duplicates, right? Partial mole kaise banta hai? Partial mole banta hai if a single ova is fertilized by two sperms. That means partial mole is dispermic. राइट एंड ओवा के पास भी अपना क्रोमोसोम्स है एंड दोनों स्पर्म्स के पास भी अपने क्रोमोसोम्स हैं सो दैट इज व्हाई द क्रोमोसोम नंबर इन पार्शियल मोल इज ट्रिपलॉइड इट इज 69 एक्स एक्स वाई सो इन अ पार्शियल मोल एक्स्ट्रा जीन्स आर फ्रॉम फादर राइट बट मेटर्नल जीन्स आर आल्सो प्रेजेंट इन कंप्लीट मोल नो मेटर्नल जीन इज प्रेजेंट इंटायर जेनेटिक मटीरियल इज फ्रॉम फादर इन अ कंप्लीट मोल बीटा एच सी जी वैल्यूज विल बी हाई एंड दे विल बी वेरी वेरी हाई दे विल बी मोर देन टेन टू द पावर ऑफ फाइव इन केस ऑफ पार्शियल मोल वैल्यूज विल बी हाई बट दे विल बी लेस देन टेन टू द पावर ऑफ फाइव In complete mole, bilateral theca luteal cyst will be present, whereas in partial mole it may be present or it may not be present. Medical complications like thyroid storm, preeclampsia, hyperemesis gravidarum they are more common in complete mole in comparison to partial mole. In case of complete mole, height of the uterus will always be more than the period of gestation. In partial mole, height of the uterus can be equal to the period of gestation or it can be less than the period of gestation. on histopathological examination in case of complete mole there will won't be any fetal tissue complete mole mein kabhi bhi koi fetal tissue nahi milta there is proliferation of trophoblast and there is excessive proliferation of trophoblast and there is venous uh, villus edema so there will be a lot of trophoblastic proliferation lot of villus edema but there won't be any fetal tissue jabki in partial mole trophoblast proliferate karega but kam karega villus edema present hoga but kam hoga and fetal tissue be present hoga on ultrasound a complete mole may you get a snowstorm appearance which is also called as a swiss cheese appearance or a honeycomb appearance whereas partial mole may the appearance is that of missed abortion chances of getting converted into gestational trophoblastic neoplasia are 15% with complete mole they are 4% with partial mole recurrence rate of uh, molar pregnancy is 1 to 4% right this is a very very important image where you are getting an ultrasound showing a snowstorm appearance and this is seen in case of complete mole 
This over here is a chest X-ray showing cannon ball appearance. Chest X-ray में अगर cannon ball appearance मिल रही है, that indicates choriocarcinoma which has metastasized to the lungs. Please remember, जब भी choriocarcinoma metastasize करता है to lungs, the most common appearance which you get is cannon ball appearance. The second most common appearance is snowstorm appearance. And जब भी lung metastasis मिलती है in choriocarcinoma, that is stage three. You don't need to remember the entire stage. Just remember, choriocarcinoma में अगर lung metastasis होगी, you are going to get that is stage three. How do you manage a molar pregnancy? Always management of molar pregnancy is suction evacuation. Sometimes they ask you a question कि थीका लूटियन सिस्ट को कैसे मैनेज करते हैं? You don't do anything. थीका लूटियन सिस्ट अपने आप से रिग्रेस कर जाती है once you have done suction evacuation of molar pregnancy. Right? You don't have to treat theca luteal cyst separately. Right? Now, if your question says that there is a female whose age is more than 40 years and her family is complete and she has a molar pregnancy, in that case, management is hysterectomy. Right? Otherwise, always you are going to say management is suction evacuation. Whether you do hysterectomy, whether you do suction evacuation, follow-up is done for six months. During and this follow-up is done by using... HCG, beta, HCG. What is the investigation of choice in molar pregnancy? The investigation of choice in molar pregnancy is ultrasound or TVS. What is the gold standard? Gold standard is histopathological examination. So, when we do suction evacuation, karenge, whatever tissue we get, we send it for histopathological examination. Follow-up, we use beta HCG values. And for 6 months pregnancy, when we follow-up for 6 months pregnancy, is contraindicated. Contraceptive of choice, which you are going to give to a patient of molar pregnancy, is oral combined pills. Coming to gestational trophoblastic neoplasias, most common GTN after molar evacuation, if they ask you this question, most common GTN after molar evacuation, please do not say choriocarcinoma, it is invasive mole. Most common GTN after term pregnancy is choriocarcinoma. Third question, question ye poocha jaye most common GTN after molar pregnancy, it is invasive mole. But agar question poocha jaye choriocarcinoma most commonly occurs after then it is molar pregnancy. Three different questions, three different answers. Very, very important questions. Right? Now, treatment of choice for gestational trophoblastic neoplasias is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy may low risk cases may hum keval eki drug dete hai, that is methotrexate. And as I told you, ectopic pregnancy may you have to give single dose methotrexate. In choriocarcinoma or in GTNs, you have to give multi-dose methotrexate. But agar high risk case hai, then you have to give multi-drug therapy. Multi-drug therapy ko kehte hai, bag shaw regime, right? Most common site of metastasis of choriocarcinoma is lungs. And just now I told you, jab bhi lung mein metastasis hoti hai, it means it is stage 3. And when you do x-ray, the most common appearance which you are going to get will be cannonball appearance. Second most appearance will be snowstorm appearance. Second most common site for metastasis is vagina. And vagina mein, jab bhi metastasis hogi, you are going to get a purplish nodule below the urethra. So, right, so you're going to get a sub-urethral nodule in case of metastasis to vagina. Clear? So, that's all what I wanted to tell you today. Uh, any questions which you have? Any questions? Please keep on revising uh, your OBGY. OBGY is a very, very high yielding subject. Many questions are asked in OBGY and most of them are simple questions, concept based questions. So if your concepts are clear, I don't think so. You are going to have any problem in answering questions related to OBGY. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Whipple. Thank you, Krishna.
ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इन क्रॉनिक हाइपरटेंशन इन प्रेगनेंसी प्रीवियस वीडियो में आई टोल्ड यू अब विलियम्स कुछ भी ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस नहीं बताता दे से दैट देर आर फर्स्ट लाइन ड्रग्स फर्स्ट लाइन ड्रग्स आई टोल्ड यू आर एल्फा मिथाइल डोपा लैबिटलॉल एंड निफिटिपीन फॉर क्रॉनिक हाइपरटेंशन स्टिल इफ दे आस्क यू ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इट हैज टू बी एल्फा मिथाइल डोपा ट्विन प्रेगनेंसी में सेकेंड बेबी को भी नॉर्मल विजाइनल डिलीवरी करा सकते हैं करा सकते हैं बेटा इफ देर आर आई मीन अगर फर्स्ट वाला विजाइनल हो रहा है तो सेकेंड वाला ऑटोमेटिकली विजाइनल कराना है कराना ही कराना है द ओनली थिंग विच यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड आई वॉन्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू रिमेंबर इज दैट आफ्टर द डिलीवरी ऑफ फर्स्ट ट्विन यू शुड नेवर गिव इंजेक्शन मिथाइल अर्गोमेट्रिन राइट सो हार्ट डिजीज की पेशेंट्स की डिलीवरी के बाद भी मिथाइल अर्गोमेट्रिन नहीं देते then after delivery of first twin kabhi bhi injection methyl ergometrin nahi dete uh, ajay revision notes are more than enough if you are revising from marrow's revision notes they are more than enough uh, rizwana yes the notes are updated which i gave you in uh, delhi they are all updated notes सौरभ इन इंडिया वी आर फॉलोइंग इंडियन गाइडलाइंस कि हम एमटीपी कर सकते हैं विद मेडिकल अबॉर्शन ओनली अप टिल सेवन वीक्स बट इफ दे आस्क यू कि सेवन टू नाइन वीक्स में क्या डोसेजेस होनी चाहिए यू शुड नो बिकॉज डब्ल्यू एच ओ इज रिकमेंडिंग अप टिल नाइन वीक्स इरफान अबाउट पार्टोग्राम आई टेल यू इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन राइट इंटरनल पोडालिक वर्जन हरजीत कुछ भी नहीं है इंटरनल पोडालिक सपोज अगर आप के पेशेंट में फर्स्ट बेबी सपोज फर्स्ट बेबी इज सिफालिक एंड सेकेंड ट्विन इज ट्रांसवर्स लाई राइट एज आई टोल्ड यू जब फर्स्ट सिफालिक होता है विजाइनल डिलीवरी पॉसिबल है तो फर्स्ट बेबी की हम विजाइनल डिलीवरी करा लेंगे उसके बाद हम मदर को ओटी में शिफ्ट करेंगे जनरल एनेस्थीसिया देंगे अपने हैंड को अंदर लेकर जाएंगे बेबी के लेग्स को पकड़ेंगे एंड वी विल मेक इट ब्रीच राइट एंड एक बार ब्रीच बना दिया उसके बाद हम डिलीवरी कराएंगे बाय ब्रीच एक्सट्रैक्शन दैट इज इंटरनल पोडालिक वर्जन फॉर गेटिंग टॉपिक्स ओके फॉर दैट अक्षय यू विल हैव टू कीप हाईलाइटिंग दो पॉइंट विच यू आर फॉर गेटिंग देखो आई बिलीव कॉन्सेप्ट आप कभी भी नहीं भूलते हो द कॉन्सेप्ट विच यू मेक दे स्टे विद यू लाइफ लॉन्ग द ओनली थिंग्स विच यू टेन टू फॉर गेट आर द वोलेटाइल थिंग्स कि कब टर्मिनेशन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी करना है कितनी डोज देनी है दीज आर द थिंग्स विच यू टेन टू फॉर गेट उसके लिए उन पॉइंट को लिखते जाओ एंड एनी थिंग विच यू आर फॉर गेटिंग मेक अ सेपरेट नोटबुक एंड जस्ट कीप ऑन राइटिंग दोज पॉइंट सो दैट One week before the exam, you are going to revise only that much. Abhinandan, all this I will take up in the next session: APH, PPH, and uh, partogram. So that I am going to take in the next session. Next session is going to be held next week. Time and date I will confirm on Instagram. So you can. all uh, you know keep a track of my instagram posts i will update it on my instagram handle when i am going to take the next session all the best i think it's a lot of time now uh all of you should now go back to your studies take some rest and then go back to your studies start revising whatever i have taught today take care